free strawberries? Yes, if you already have strawberries, I'm going to show you how to get free plants off of those. And if you don't, you're only going to have to buy them one time. When you grow your own strawberries, nothing beats the way they taste. Right, come along with me. We're going to go in my little strawberry patch and we're going to separate them apart. Okay, you can see this jumble of strawberry plants. Now they crawl along just like crabgrass. They, one part comes out and it sticks in the ground, it roots, and it keeps going, which is nice. But if you don't separate them, they'll crowd each other and the strawberries will rot. So let's get to that. I'm going to start digging up some of these strawberries so I can replant them. Are you going to help me flower? Huh? Good girl? Alright, first thing you want to do is kind of try to find out where they separate. It can be kind of hard and you're probably going to kill some plants, but if you don't kill some of the plants, you're not going to get any strawberries because they will crowd. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to pick the healthiest ones and use those for transplanting. This right here is nice. What I will do is I'll pick the weeds out. All the live ones and, and this is crabgrass. This is the worst thing. We all know this, all gardeners. Actually, I just throw this on the ground, it's gonna grow. So I'll make sure I get it out of the garden. Right. You see how I got the big root clump? I'm not going to mess with that at all. That This is perfect to transplant. That's exactly what you want. Let's get a couple more. Can I help? putting all the crabgrass in one spot. See that's two plants. I'm not going to separate them yet but when I go to transplant them I'll separate them. The key is to give all the plants room. If you give the plants room they'll flourish. Just like chickens, right flower? Here. You good in there? Oh you found it! Good girl! Now when you transplant the the strawberries, the chickens will mess them up if you let them have free range. They'll only mess up a couple. So plant a lot. And then you won't have any problems, right, Flower? Uh, Flower said she didn't mess them up. She said I planted them wrong. So maybe I did. That's a, this is a couple plants too, but I don't want to separate it until I'm ready to plant it. Look, the worm in there, that's a red wiggler, it's a compost worm. You can see on this wood path, I've already transplanted some. There's one chicken killed the one that was here. <laughs> There's another one. There's another one. Another one, another one, another one, another one. Another one, another one, another one. I almost ran over that one. They're on the other side too. Now you might want to do these honestly in the fall or in the winter while they're still dormant. But uh, 
we did do these in the fall and the winter. We just didn't finish all the ones we have, and we're gonna keep on going. We've got more strawberries than we know what to do with, honestly, right now. More strawberry plants. <laughs> Okay, I'm trying to give you a good look at how tightly they grow together and how they actually grow like crabgrass. What they do is they put off these shoots and uh, you, uh, you can actually cut those off to produce more fruit. I cut off some of them, but I can't help getting free strawberry plants. They're all hooked together. You see by this this is what used to have those two hooked together, but once they re they root themselves, they uh, they separate. But they're still you still see that's hooked to that one. This is hooked to this one. Look, it's put off another shoot. I might have. Oh man, look, see, I buried that. See when I put wood chips down and cardboard. <sighs> I buried this strawberry plant that this one right here see that it's coming down right here this is a strawberry leaf right here and there's the plant you see how it's white no chlorophyll more like borophyll you know no uh no sunlight and it doesn't turn green all right well hopefully you can see how they're connected okay here I'm gonna show you making a hill for the strawberries they do best when they're on a hill it uh it gives a place for the strawberries to hang it makes it easier for you to find them you don't want to plant them too close together you want room to get in between so you can get those strawberries for those birds too do you hear him he wants my strawberries Okay, you might have noticed I've already tilled this area previously and uh, there's a bunch of leaves, organic material. I don't uh, use any fertilizers. I get wood chips free and I compost and I save all the leaves and I have the chickens and the chicken coop that helps out a lot. Okay, this is where I'm getting my water from. Rain barrel. We've got it set up on top of the well house, ironically. Just got a little homemade gutter. Top of this 55 gallon bucket. Got an old window screen on it so there's no mosquitoes. Been wanting to get some more, but this thing fills up so quick. And last year, we didn't have to water our garden once. Our hose doesn't even reach the end of it. We've got so much rain. I do like this thing, however, for uh, transplanting and seeds because there are certain times you need water. And actually, using rainwater is better because the pH is better. Rainwater catches nitrogen when it's falling from the sky. Air is made up of mostly nitrogen, and the water catches it on the way down. The uh, miracle Grow and all that stuff, that one guy, he figured out how to get the nitrogen out of the air and put it into the plants. And that's why we have so many people on this earth, because we figured out how to grow enough food for them. Before him, they thought the care and capacity was one billion people. But we've gone much further than that. The key 
to transplanting these things is you don't want to bury it further than it was before. It will rot and die. That is the, the biggest thing about re, or, uh, planting or replanting these things, whether they're the roots or the whole plant like this. You do not want to bury it deeper. You want it as close to exactly the same as, you want, as it was. That's why a hill is a good idea because you put it up on top of that hill and uh, it's not going to be below anything else. And then the strawberries are going to have a place to go. All the delicious strawberries. Some of that rain water. You want to keep the rows at least a foot apart. I've got mine probably four foot apart. But I've got a tiller in a big yard. If you've got a smaller yard and no tiller, you might want to put them closer together. But if you've got room, you need to give your plants room. And that includes taking out all these weeds. Any of these dead leaves you can pick off, just be careful not to hurt the plant. Make sure the roots are covered. And the director is calling for light. Can we have some, please? I've also got a couple uh, rocks I painted red that will fool the birds. They'll think uh, they're strawberries. I'll come down and pick them, and they won't get anything. Now, I know that might sound mean, but Trust me, those birds, they come down, they take one bite out of the strawberry, and then they move on to the next one. I mean, if you're going to eat it, eat it, right? Okay, you can see here's the row we planted in the winter. Here's some of the plants down here. Here's another row of them. All the way down there, there's another row comes back up here and here's the row I just planted for you guys all right well I hope you had as much fun as I did and maybe you learned something all right I'm still building the shelf but I'm also going to show you guys how to do the same thing with grape plants, raspberry plants, and blackberry plants. So, stick around to see more videos. Okay, bye guys.